415. I couldn't understand that. Why would he fly 415? Because it was his birthday. That's why. <laughs> but we need to wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. So we love him. Happy birthday. Yeah. 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 By the way, I might as well announce my birthday too, because I want, we're leaving in 10 days, by the way. We, we uh, leave 10 days from now, May 6th, we're on the road, we hit the road. And uh, we open up at the uh, Maiden State Penitentiary with the first revival there. May, May 14th, isn't it? May 14th. And my birthday is May 13th, and I'll be 81 years old. Oh, you want to give me anything to my ear, right? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, uh, uh, so I wanted to share a few things with you. Um, I want to give a little testimony. With last week, I went back to the uh, neurosurgeon at the VA hospital because I had been having trouble with the back and so forth. And believe in God, every morning when I get up, I anoint myself in the name of Jesus and by his stripes I am healed. Amen. It's as simple as that. So I went back to the Lord's surgeon last week and the announcement was, you do not need surgery. Hallelujah. That's number one. Amen. Yeah. And number two, you do not have any disease in your body. tell you about the prison ministry, what has taken place. This year we will be in eight prisons throughout the U.S. Uh, we have uh, three in Albany, New York this year for the very first time. Wow. We're in Chicago, Illinois also wow. with two more and we're taking on, of course, the penitentiary in Maine and then the New Hampshire State Penitentiary as wow. well. Erie, so, yeah, in Erie, Pennsylvania uh, we also we had two women's prisons for the first time. Oh, wow. uh -huh. And one in Erie, that one, that one in Erie is 1,000 ladies are in there right now. Wow. And that's pitiful when you really think about it. Yeah, it is. 1,000 females are in that prison, Cedar Springs, Pennsylvania, where we will be going. And as I understand, they're not using the chapel for it. They're going to use the gym because they expect a, a huge turnout. Hallelujah. So, what do we want? We're, we're trusting God for souls. Yes. Yes. Souls are our business, our only business. We don't have any other business but no. souls. Yes. If anybody else has any other business being out there, they need to go home. Amen. Amen. Simple as that. So we're out there to get souls saved. We have 27,000 books in prison throughout the U.S. right now. I put this this morning to show you this stack of emails. This is from our distributor who distributes the books, 27,000 out already. Well, we just gave them 2,000 more. And that 2,000 cost us $4,180 for that 2,000 books. Well, guess what? He's almost out of books. He'll be out of books within the next probably three weeks. They will be gone, and we will have to order probably another 2,000 books. <laughs> and we're trusting God. God is our provider, not man. God is the provider. We, we believe that with all our hearts. But uh, all these emails, this is where the books are. This is where 27,000 books are located in prisons throughout the U.S. It names every prison, every county jail where they're in. So we give God the praise and glory for that. Uh, even like today, I think we've got how many letters with today? I think we've got another 12, 15 more letters today from prisoners throughout the U.S. And, and, yeah. Colt, in fact, we, we, got, we got one last week from Coleman Federal Penitentiary. And we got one from a place called Florence, Colorado. Now you may not know what Florence, Colorado, what kind of prisons in Florence, Colorado. When Alcatraz closed, the federal penitentiary in Alcatraz, in California, closed down. It was replaced with 
Florence, Colorado, Pennsylvania. Wow. They call that the new Alcatraz. Wow. Maximum, maximum security. They're locked up 23 hours a day there. Wow. Soundproof cells where you cannot talk to the man next door to you. Wow. You don't see him. And when the yard time comes, you're taken out and you have a private little yard for yourself to exercise for that one hour. Wow. And that's it. And uh, it's a lockdown, and I'm, I'm, I have an article on it. I don't have it here, but I'm told that most of the guys there, within a couple years, three, four years, their mind starts to gel. I'm sure. Wow. Because they have, they have, they have no, you know, no visits. They don't have nothing. They don't communicate with any other uh, people. And it's just a, a question of when you're going to die there. That's about wow. it. So we got, finally we got a letter from there, so the book, the book is in uh, the new Alcatraz, and we praise God for that as well. Yeah. 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 in a minute here. I told Wendy when I uh, came up there, I said, this is my message for the morning, I'll be preaching out here. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get done around 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I want to share a quick story, a very quick story with you. When I got out of prison, back in the early 70s, I was invited to preach in a church. And man, I was on fire, let me tell you. I said, nothing's going to stop me, no devil, nobody's going to stop me in my ministry. And I was all alone when I came out after doing that 15 years in prison. Yeah, yeah. And I get invited to this church. And uh, down in Tennessee, and the pastor was a guy by the name of Woodrow Walker, and he was one of them spitting preachers. Uh -oh. <laughs> when he, when he, he always had a handkerchief over his mouth, you know, and because he'd be and spitting all over the place. And that's why I always carry a handkerchief in my mouth when I'm up to speak, you know. And so, and so he invites me to the church, and the church was pretty well packed out. And I take the pulpit, and he's sitting right over here in a chair, about right here. Yeah. I always get worried when I see a pastor sitting in a chair, and he's only a few feet away from oh, me, because it looks like oh. he's going to have to jump in to rescue me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I take the pulpit, and I'm preaching for the very first time, the, this is my first congregation. I got 23 pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> An illegal pad. 23 23 pages. And so I take the pulpit. I'm preaching at the woman at the well, by the way. And I want to tell you right now, my 43 years of ministry, I ain't never preached it again. <laughs> and so as I get up there, I start into the message on the first page. And Jesus was thirsty. He done met the woman at the well, and he told her he was thirsty. And asked for a drink of water. And uh, he, was thirsty. he was really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she says, how come you're asking me for a drink? And as I go on and on with this, I'm still on the first page in 15 minutes. <laughs> and I'm talking about Jesus is still thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't get off the first page because of my, my mind's all confused now because I'm thinking, how am I going to get to the second page? What am I? I'm reading what I wrote down. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the lifesaver on this side sitting down, he's sitting there, and all of a sudden he starts, God have mercy. Jesus have mercy. God have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he was thirsty, and uh, <laughs> Finally, by the grace of God, this man gets up out of the chair and walks over to me, and he puts his arms around me, <laughs> and I begin to cry, <laughs> because I am so embarrassed, <laughs> like you would not believe. So he took the mic, and he said, you know, this is Brother Frankie's first message, you know, God done saved him in it. In that hellhole where he was locked up 15 years and delivered him. And he's an evangelist. And he's going to be a good evangelist one day. You know. And so he gave me all this praise and all that, you know, and all that. And then he preached the message that morning. 
<laughs> but the thing was, after it was all over, said and done, he calls me back into his office, and he says this to me. He says, I want to ask you a question. Where did you get that message? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I sat down and I wrote it out. The woman at the well, I read it, and I just wrote it out and I'm going to preach it. He said, well, who told you to preach it? I don't know, I got there. He said, but did God tell you to preach it? I said, no, he didn't. He said, well, there's where the problem is. He said, did you pray about that message? I said, no, I didn't. Well, you got to learn to pray about the message and ask God if this is the message that you want me to preach today. Yeah, amen. I learned a very valuable lesson from that because God have mercy, Jesus have mercy. <laughs> and any other time I went to the poker from that time on, boy, let me tell you, I prayed and said, God, is this the message you want me to preach? Amen. Amen. You know? Amen. And, um, and, and the Lord has called me to preach the message of repentance. I've been preaching repentance for 43 years. As Judy will tell you, I don't preach nothing else but a message of repentance. Yes. And when I got called to preach in that cell at 3.26 a.m., mm. I will never forget it. And the Lord said, I called you to be, and he called me by my name, I called you to be an evangel. And as soon as I heard that word, I knew it was trouble. <laughs> and believe me, it is. And, uh, and I prayed about it, and, and the Lord said to me, I, I didn't call you to preach the Rose Garden message. And the Rose Garden message to me is John 3.16. That's the Rose Garden message as far as I'm concerned in the Holy Bible. And uh, he said, I didn't call you to preach John 3.16. I called you to preach the coming woe, the coming judgment, the yeah, yeah. coming against the church of the living God if they refuse to turn back and repent of their sins. Yes. And that's Amen. the message I have preached for 43 years. Yes. Praise God. This is were take two pills at the same time, you know, twice a day. Yeah, well, he took one. On the way home from the VA, he popped the pill. So I says, honey, are you going to church with me tonight? No, he says, my head hurts, and he says, I don't know what this pill's going to do. Well, I went to church, I sang, came home after service, I went to bed, but about midnight, he comes down the hallway, he says, come on, you've got to come see this. Uh -oh. And he pretty near pulled me out of the bed by my left arm. And I think maybe something to do with the dog, because we had a little dog there. Go up there, lace his spine. So he's going out the patio, out the back door. I said, honey, where are you taking me? What, what's out here I'm supposed to see? He said, look up. Look up there in the sky. He says, you see that cross? I said, what cross, honey? <laughs> There's a cross 
else there, God has given me a sign. All right. <laughs> I said, honey, I hate to bust your bubble, but that's a light pole. <laughs>
right cup. Amen. Fill it up and make me whole. Amen. You got your Bibles. You'd like to read along with us. Either this pulpit got taller or I got shorter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 49, chapter 12, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 12, verse 49. <clears throat> Yesterday I was sitting there getting my notes together, my outline. I sat there a couple hours. Frankie said, that must be a long message, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I said, only 10 pages. <laughs> he said, 10 pages. Like he really believed me. But uh, no, we didn't go quite that extreme. <laughs> Hallelujah. Four to six is my limit usually. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 12, verse 49. Jesus is talking here. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? <clears throat> Thank you, Father, this morning for your word. And for the next few moments, I pray, Father, that you would hide me behind the cross, empty me out of myself, yeah. Father God, and send the anointing that destroys the yoke. God, give us ears this morning to hear and to receive, Father, yeah. from your word. And God, this morning I pray, Father, that, Lord, we will be challenged by your word. God, that you will prick our hearts this morning by your Holy Spirit. We'll ever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for what is done and remain of this service. For it's in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. I am an evangelist. That's what I do. <laughs> that is my call in life. Yes. What does an evangelist do? They do the work of an evangelist. And we hit them and we run. <laughs> we tried to pastor a couple of times in 20 years, but come to find out, I could be content anywhere as long as I'm serving the Lord and working for Him. But if you don't have a pastor's heart, you're in the wrong field. And so, you know, it's an experience. But we are true evangelists. And, you know, I often tell Frankie, I said, Here's the way it goes. You come and you preach repentance. Hellfire and brimstone. Repent or perish. You bruise them. You wound them. You leave them half dead. And then the Holy Ghost will send me behind you to pour in the balm of Gilead to heal their wounds. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a real team. Amen. But this morning, the thought, and I, I prayed about this, as I said, and... and I had different ways and I'm, you know, different thoughts, but in the prayer, the Lord just kept leading me back to this out of uh, Luke 12. And the thought that I'd like to share with you today with the help of the Holy Ghost, fired up or burned out? Fired up or burned out? Jesus says, I've come to send fire on the earth. He said in what is there for me to do if it's already kindled? Kindling of a fire reveals a need felt. And we sense a need of rekindling fire among the people, God's people. Amen. When I say the church, I'm not referring to Faith International. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Amen? Amen? So we know that there's darkness. And wherever there is darkness, there is dangers. Amen? Amen. So this world is dark as it's been said this morning. But when the darkness is getting darker, Jesus is shining brighter. Amen? Amen. Amen. We live in a day when pastors and other ministers are burning out at a faster rate than ever before. According to a recent report on family news from Dr. James Dobson. Now, I've got a, 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 a 
just this little piece here before we get into the word. 80% of survey, 80% of pastors and 84% of their spouses are discouraged and are dealing with depression. Listen, 40% of pastors and 47% of their spouses report they are suffering from burnout, from frantic schedules, and unrealistic expectations. Approximately 1,500 pastors leave their assignments each month, not a year, but a month, due to moral failure. We just had a pastor. We had the utmost confidence in. Pastor ministered for him for 15 years, and because of moral failure, he had to step down. Just, just what, honey, February, we got a text that he stepped down. He was made to sit down and go through restoration period. Wow. Amen. And our hearts were crushed. Oh, no, not this man because we thought the world of this man. Again, the Lord, he tells us, put not your trust in man because man will fail you. Man will always be there. Church, we're living in a day and a time. We better look to God. We better know who we trust and where our faith is anchored. Amen. Intimacy with God, the closeness that we 
we need with God. Yes. Lack of intimacy with God, whether on the part of the pastors or other professional ministers or deacons or other church leaders or the believer in the pew opens door to all sorts of worldliness, corruption, doctrinal error, fleshly lust, and spiritual ignorance. That's right. You hear me? Now, I have a question. Are you fired up or are you burned out? Fired up. Fired up. I looked up the word fired up. This was a definition. Full of enthusiasm. Yeah. Full of energy. Yeah. Stirred up. Yeah. Aroused. Yeah. Beside oneself. Yeah. Fired up. Fatigue, frustration, stress, and overworked. Things connected to this fire. Burning coals, flame, sparks, ashes, and smoke. Church, I believe it's time. That we'll allow the Holy Spirit of God to fan the flames of the cold ashes of our soul. Amen. 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 God said He's coming back for a lively people, yeah. a lively stone. Yeah. Amen. That all this morning, things connected with the fire, and fire is characterized as bright, <laughs> as spreading, yeah. as enlightening, as impurifying, and consuming. John said in Luke 3.16, he said, John says, I indeed baptize you with water. And he says, but there is one mightier than I. And that, that when he says, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unlatch his shoes. In other words, untie his shoes. He said, but when he comes, he will baptize you with what? With fire, with the Holy Ghost. Fire, 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 shut up in his bowels. Hallelujah, Jeremiah said. Amen, Jeremiah got to a point. Amen, he was so frustrated with ministry, with the people. Amen, and he got so discouraged there one time. He says, I will not make mention of his name again. I'm through telling them about the Lord. I'll not preach about Jesus no more. I'll not declare his name. But he said, but while I was using, it was like fire.
hunger after things that have no eternal value in them. Amen. Amen. But all this morning, we as as born again believers, we as saints, yeah. Amen. Yeah. We know this morning that we got to go to the fountain of living waters, yeah. the fountain that will never run dry. Yeah. Amen. He said, if you drink, it will be like rivers of living water. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Boiling up inside yeah. of you yeah. with joy, you yeah. shall draw yeah. our water out of the wells of salvation. Amen. To God, oh, we need more than an occasional outpouring. We need something that will be continual every day. And I'll pour it from Jehovah God. Amen. From the Holy Ghost of glory. We need it every day. Not just on Sunday. Amen. Not just on a weekday. But every day we need a fresh outpouring. want the 
the truth. If they don't have anybody that they want to leave, bottom line. I preached in a church of God about five, six years ago on a Sunday morning. And I preached on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm in a Pentecostal church, and that's what God yeah. gave me to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Two Baptist families came that morning. Oh. And in the middle of my ministry, the tongues came with evidence. Sure. Oh. <laughs> so after service, it was, it was decided where we were going to go have lunch. And so the pastor, he comes running in the restaurant. And he's all short-winded and out of breath. We kept saying, where's the pastor? Where's the pastor? Nobody knew where the pastor was. So finally, Pastor Ray comes running in the restaurant at Hosses. And he's all short-winded and out of breath. And he sat down. And he says, well, thanks to you and Judy, he says, I had, I've lost two families today. Oh, Frankie says, what do you mean, pastor? He said, well, she spoke in tongues. And it scared them to death. Hallelujah. <laughs> and he says, I had to run after you. <laughs> and they told you that they don't want to come back. Hello, they knew when they walked through the door they were coming into a Pentecostal church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. When you walk through a Pentecostal door, you're marked as being one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you are or not. <laughs> I want to tell you, it's real, it's real, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Yes, it is. I feel him in my hands. Yes, I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. Amen. that it's real.
breathes on anything dead. Yeah. He breathes life into it. Right. Amen. Amen. He breathes life into it. Adam lay there in the garden, just an old cold lump of clay. God formed him from the dust of the grave. Ooh. He just lay there, lifeless, yep. 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 dead, yep. until God yeah. <laughs> breathed oh, into his nostrils, yeah. and he became what? A living soul. Yeah. You know, when God breathes upon us, we become a living soul. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need the breath of God flowing on us more than we need the things of the world. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We need God. Yeah. We sang this little chorus sometime back in churches, I remember. Let it breathe on me. Yeah. Let the breath of God yeah. breathe yeah. on me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hebrews 12, I believe it is, and 29 says, For our God. Is a consuming fire. Yes. Consuming. You know what he desires to do this morning? Our God. Yes. The consuming fire. Yes. He desires to consume us with his love. Yes. He desires to consume us with his power. Yes. He desires to consume us with his anointing. Yes. He desires to consume us with his holiness. He desires this morning, church, to consume us with his righteousness. He desires this morning for us to be consumed in his presence. Yes. And he desires this morning for you and I to be consumed in his fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you tired of the mediocre? Yeah. I'm tired. My spirit cries within me more. More of God. Yes. More, more, more. Yes. more about Jesus. Yes. Where I go. Yes. Yes. More of His grace to others show. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Mediocre is not going to get the job done. No. Mediocre is not going to win souls. Mediocre is not going to see a great move of God in our midst. Hallelujah. Oh, but God, this morning, he desires to show us more of his glory. Aren't you tired of just going through the motion? We go to many churches where that's all we see. Is the it's Sunday morning. We're in revival. Got to go hear what the man or the woman of God is going to say this morning. Three or four songs. Receive the offering. Have prayer over the sick. Prayer over those who need prayer. Hear the word. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, he didn't go through the motions. We should have. So why do we do him the injustice when we come to church and just go through the motions? I don't know where all this is coming from. It's turning all my notes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> When he lay down, when he hung suspended between heaven and earth, and he cried, It is finished! Do you think he was just going through the motion? No, no. no. The majority of the church world is burnt out. Burnt out. They lost the fire somewhere way back then. Way back. But our God is the same today, yesterday, today, forever. They said his fire, his fire is still out. His power is never short. Amen. But it burns. Amen. And he's all powerful today, just as he was back when he hung on the cross. Amen. 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 Are you tired of the complacency? Well, it's the same old thing every time I go to church. Well, it's your fault. It is. Yeah. If you would pray, Amen. if you would shut yourself in the secret place Amen. of the Most High God, yeah. get along with God in yes, your secret Lord. prayer, yeah. in the closet, yeah. and pray, pray. Uh -huh. to God who sees in secret, yeah. and the God that sees in secret say He would reward you openly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's the 
Don't blame the pastor because the service was dry. Don't blame the praise and worship team because the, pa the, the service was dry. Don't blame them because they didn't sing the songs that you wanted to hear. <laughs> blame yourself because you didn't pray the power of God down in the service. Amen. Yesterday, I believe it was 
yesterday we were talking about holiness and and uh, I said, you know, there are your holiness ranks who emphasize on the long hair, the long dresses, yeah. you know, yeah. the no makeup, yeah. the no jewelry. But God showed me, revealed, I got the revelation, I'll yeah. put it that way, yeah. about 16 years ago. I was called upon to do a ladies' conference in Philadelphia. And I said, what is your thing? And they said, holiness is man's standard for living today. And I said, oh, God, I'm duped. <laughs> <laughs> because I was brought up in the old holiness movement oh, holiness. where you didn't cut your hair, you didn't wear makeup. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't have a, a, a makeover, so no. to speak, no. you know? And I said to Frankie, I said, honey, I'm duped. I just know what I've been taught all my life. But you know what? I got the word out. And I went to prayer. And I prayed. And I looked at scripture. And I prayed. And I looked at scripture. And then one day, sitting in Louis' recliner there in, on 30th Street, I opened the word. And here's what he said. It is not the plating of the hair or the wearing of the gold. Right. Amen. Amen. He says, but it's the hidden man of the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I say, honey, I just got the revelation. I went and I poured my heart out to those dear sisters, Haitians and Jamaicans. Amen. And I said, God said, it's not what you look like on the outside, but it's what the heart is made of. It's from the heart. If Jesus is in the heart, he told me then the outside will shape up. Amen. 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 In modesty, you know. Everything in modesty. Amen. 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 But the old paths is not about the long hair and the long sleeves. It's getting back to where we used to walk with Jesus. Amen. And have fellowship with him. Amen. And have relationship with him. Amen. That's what he's talking about. David said, oh, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Oh, see, I was born and raised in Pentecost. And I've seen them have some hoedowns. <laughs> Just tell you one incident. This church I attended as a little girl. My dad was six foot something, 200 and some odd pounds. He was a big strapping man. We were in the choir when I'd seen him. We sang out of the red back hymns. People who wrote those songs lived in victory. They had a walk, they walked in faith. They had the fire of God in their lives. We were singing that night about 90 miles an hour. And there were two little wings over to my left. Yeah. And only one side of them rolled out. And when the one side was rolled out, it only opened like this one. Uh -huh. Not very big at all. But that window was open. And my dad was leading the, the, the choir that night. And the power of God came into that place like the sound of a rushing mighty wind. The power of God hit my daddy. And out that little window, he went. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing there. And I'm standing there, awestruck. <laughs> How did that shake man get out that little window? <laughs> oh. Right behind him went Hubert Welch. He was almost as big as my dad. Oh, wow. oh my Lord. And they went out the window, and they came in the back door. <laughs> <laughs> and the power of God fell in that place. Hallelujah. In the church, I have a lot of fond memories of my childhood growing up. Yeah. Amen. A lot of memories of the moving, of the manifestation of the power of God, yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And you know what? He desires, He wants to move in our midst just like today, like He did then. Yeah. Do you know who cripples God? We do. We, do. we right. cripple Him. But if I'm telling you the truth, I'm telling you what I know because I've been there, I've done that. If we get into our prayer, you know that's where we draw power and strength? Yes, it's in our prayer. Yes. In our prayer time. We don't get it by flipping on the TV and watching this preacher and that preacher and that's all well and good. But we get our power source when we enter our prayer closet. And prayer is one word that's preached a lot about. There's many books written on 
of prayer, but so much little of it is done. Yeah. Right. So little of it is done in the church. We find time for everything else but to pray. We give God five minutes in the morning. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take. That's not prayer. No. No. Right. Nope. Nope. No. no. But that's the size of the prayer line for many of God's people. No power. Because we're a prayerless bunch of people. Amen. Then if he says, then thy presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 16, 11. The fire of God that we're talking about this morning, it will awaken us. Yeah. He will reveal the deep things of God to us. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. This fire of God will consume us. Yeah. It will soften us. It will transform us. This fire will inflame us. And this fire, it will protect us. How do we acquire this fire? By launching out into the deep. Launching out. Get off the shoreline. You'll never get anywhere with God as long as you stay on the shore. Yes. Amen? Amen. You've got to get in the deeper waters to swim. Yes. Amen? Amen? Get into the river of God that flows direct out of the throne room of God. Yes. Amen? Amen? Get so deep in this river until it is in absolute control of your life and your destiny. Amen. That's being fired up. Amen. When we get fired up, We'll see souls come to Jesus. That's right. Amen. 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 We'll see miracles. Amen. 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 We'll Amen. see the manifestations of the Holy Ghost like we've never witnessed them before. Amen. You know, my mind takes me back to the Philippines. What we witnessed wow. that night Amen. on God is Real Night in that crusade. And you know what? God is the same God here right. as He was in the Philippines. The same God that came under that tabernacle yes. and healed many, healed hundreds, yes. saved hundreds. Yes. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. He desires. Yes. He's more yes. than ready. Yes. He's yes. more than able to do it right here yes. and up our season. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 